Okay, everybody, I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing <clears throat> Silverthorn by Raymond E. Feist, book number three in his Rift War Saga. It came out in 1985 when I was just a kid. So this book holds a lot of nostalgia for me because I, I bought this when I was, I bought it when it was first printed. This is the, this is the copy that I bought. I love the yellow. Let's talk about the covers first. Because you know I always uh, review covers because I love graphic design and cover illustration. So let's just get to the book's packaging first. The il cover illustration was done by Kevin Johnson. In fact, Kevin Johnson did the first four Rift War book illustrations. Um, Magician, Magician Master, Darkness at Sethanon, and Silverthorn did a great job. Whenever I look at these covers, it just takes me right back to when I was a kid reading these books for the first time. Um, now, Don Mates, the great illustrator Don Mates, redid all of these covers <clears throat> back in the mid-1990s, and Don Mates did a fantastic job on those covers. I don't have them here to show you, but they were great also, but I just always kept my original books that I bought when I was a kid. So um, anyway, <clears throat> I will admit for a period of time <clears throat> when I was young, Silverthorn became my favorite fantasy novel of all time. That's above The Sword of Shannara, Dragonlance, David Eddings, Thieves World, Lord of the Rings, all of them, for a period of about three or four months, I thought Silverthorn was the greatest fantasy novel ever written. Not only that, but I just thought it had the best opening of any book I'd ever read. And it was just so pa packed full of all of the fantasy stuff that I loved. <clears throat> now, I'll be honest, I hadn't read this. I probably read it three or four times in high school, maybe once or twice in college, have not read it since, so it's been a long while since I've read this. Like I said, it came out in 1985. I probably read it a half a dozen times within those first four or five years that it was out. Same with these other books. These four books, the first four books in the Rift War Saga, were dynamite to me back in the day. Dynamite. And if you know, I reread... Magician and Magician's Apprentice early, about a year ago for uh, my channel. So you can see my review of those two books. Just type in Durfee and Raymond D. Feist. You'll, the review will come up. <clears throat> Did this hold up? Is, I mean, is was it worthy of my such high praise as a youngster? So I started rereading it. Recently. Took me right back. It took me right back to when I was a kid. All of the characters, Liam, Martin, Arutha, 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 the three brothers, the three sons of the dead king, Boric, you know, they're, 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 they're going back, they're, they're, they're going back to Rillanon. Um, Lori, the minstrel, who's, who's, who's uh, going to marry their sister, Caroline, I think it's Caroline, C-A-R-L-L-I-N-E, Car Carline, Carline is probably how that's pronounced. Anyway. <clears throat> So we've got this uh, family of young princes and princesses. Their father, Boric, is dead, and they've got to um, keep the realm together. And then right off the bat, Ar Prince Arutha, his betrothed, is poisoned. <clears throat> and we've got to figure out who's done the poisoning, how can we find the antidote to the poison and all this stuff. So there's a bunch of political intrigue involving uh, the Mord Hell, the Nighthawks, the Assassins, the Thieves Guild, you know, like poisons. This book is chock full of secret passages, um, quests, adventures, um, all sorts of, all of the stuff we love in fantasy books. And I will also say, not only did the, was this book for a brief period of time, my favorite novel of all time. But Jimmy the Hand, the young thief, the, the, the young mocker, I guess they call him the Thieves Guild or the Mockers. For a while, this thief, Jimmy the Hand, was by far my favorite fantasy character 
of all time for a period of three or four months. And then, you know, the next Dragon Lance novel came out or the next David Eddings novel came out or the, or the Wish Song of Shannara came out. And then uh, suddenly all of that was turned upside down and those things became my favorite. But you, you get what I'm going. You get where I'm going. Um, I do, after rereading this, <clears throat> and just for such a short novel, all of the, um, you know, and don't you love the yellow end papers? I wish they would do yellow end papers. I, this is just an aside. Or did I already mention that? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, rereading this, I was just amazed at how well Raymond E. Feist's writing still holds together today. Um, as just quality prose. Um, and the storytelling is engrossing. There is so much going on on every page. I just am in awe of how much adventure Raymond Feist packed into such a small book. It's just amazing to me. Not only that, but it, it, was, it was an adventure that I felt like was just flying by. I actually felt like it was paced perfectly. And I think that my younger self, that's what my younger self was drawn to, was just everything was in this. From knights in shining armor, to elves, to dwarves, to bad people, to poi to like the poisons and the silver thorn. And, the, and well, we didn't even talk about the, the, the silver thorn, which is the thrust of the whole quest of everything. And the magic users like Pug and all of the wonderful characters from the first two books that come back together and work together to go on this quest to fight, you know, the bad guys. I just absolutely loved everything about it when I was a kid. And I fell in love with it again as an adult. I still to this day think that Silverthorn is Raymond Feist's best novel. I think it's even better than the first two. I do remember reading A Darkness of Sethanon when I was younger and just getting blown away by that one too. So we will be rereading this one soon and doing a review of it. And not only that, I've got about, I think I've got about eight other of the Rift War saga novels in my collection and we'll review all of them. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is a, I'm, I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10 as if my younger self were reviewing it today my younger self would have said this is the best fantasy novel in the world so it's a 10 out of 10 i'm gonna stick with that i'm gonna stick with that review and that it's just awesome 